professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tree Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this quick clip, I'm going to be going over um, a critical uh, measure in clinical trials, um, which is the intraclass correlation coefficient. Um, now, this is a cheat sheet, um, which the NIH collaboratory has uh, come up with. Um, a collaboratory, by the way, um, by definition, is an, kind of an informal way and place where researchers can exchange ideas and information about certain things. Um, so let's get started without further ado. Um, so the intra-class intra correlation coefficient, of course, it's a descriptive statistic, um, and it's an important indication in design and analysis um, of, of cluster randomized trials. And um, since instead of being randomized um, by individual participant, the unit of randomization is actually the whole cluster. Um, it's the whole group, like for instance, a randomization of a hospital, a clinic, a primary uh, care setting. Um, the outcome still is being measured on an individual level. So, so that's why um, if, if they're from one setting, there's a possibility that they all might be similar to each other. So if they're all similar to each other, they would get a value of one. If they're not similar to each other at all, they would get a value of zero. Um, so that those are the theoretical kind of ranges, but um, for more pragmatic, uh, most pragmatic cl cluster randomized trials is typically less than 0.2. So as long as is, um, you know, um, around 0.01 to 0.05 of interclass correlation coefficient, not too similar, um, then that's that's better because then there's more uh, representation. Um, so high correlation is not is not good um, because then that high correlation will lead to similar outcomes. Um, so let's take a look at some examples, two examples. Um, one in a dietary intake study, um, data from several members of the same family would likely be very similar. And so um, and that would differ from other families. So, um, you know, there may be little gain from sampling more than one member in the same family, you know. Um, but if a cluster is an entire city and subjects uh, are randomly sampled, um, there might be relatively little similarity. So this is where um, this is where this becomes important. Um, each individual subject would likely contribute independent information here um, because the ice so so the ICC is high, um, and so. Um, There's probably going to be um, so 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 this is for um, the patient satisfaction. So we're not going to look at this vi uh, figure right now because it's really distracting us. Um, this is for number two, um, but for number one, um, uh, so you you would basically want to get information from various family members from different. Um, different places within the city rather than just one family member uh, or one uh, group of family members. Um, then in the second one, suppose we have six providers, um, each with three eligible participants for pragmatic cluster um, randomized trial. Um, in the hypothetical case, the outcome is patient satisfaction rated on a scale from 1 to 10 with an outcome distribution as shown in favor 1. Um, so w one might expect that patients seen by a specific provider will have more similar levels of satisfaction to each other than to patients from um, other providers, and that some providers will have consistently high um, patient satisfaction, whereas um, others will have consistently low patient satisfaction. This is an example of how outcomes within each cluster are likely to be similar. Um, so 
basically what you have here is um, six providers um, and I believe three measurements here um, and so as you can see there's variability here um, and the um, intercore um, correlator uh, coefficient is uh, pretty high um, however if all providers have fairly low average uh, patient satisfa satisfaction and the within provider variability is similar to that in figure one, then the ICC will be smaller than in figure one. Um, so this is, a, figure two is an example of this type of situation. Um, so, th so this is a byproduct of the satisfaction score level. Um, so when the outcomes within a cluster are no more similar to each other than they are to members of any other cluster, there's no structure provided by the clusters and therefore the overall group of participants looks like a random sample of individuals rather than uh, a sample from uh, different clusters. Um, so we can kind of end this by um, looking at the impact on power, clustering and um, looking at the impact on power. So I know we've been skirting around um, kind of what the idea is here um, and the difference between figure one and figure two. But I, I think it's very straight and clear um, um, what is going on. So um, if we look at the first six clusters, the um, first six set of answers, um, you see that there's a lot of variability. And that means that if you do add another additional provider or additional six providers, even if you ask me, um, then that would add a lot of information because there is a lot of variability. Um, so interclass correlation coefficient, there's a lot of a variability there so you're gonna have now um, if you have six providers and they're basically telling you the same thing then the likelihood that the seventh and the eighth and the ninth provider um, will tell you something different is not as great which means that we don't have as much benefit in adding as many more study participants so you're kind of making this um, judgment call as we speak um, and this is definitely a clinical trial type of a medical epidemiology consideration, uh, much more so uh, than, a, than a research perspective, but um, understanding the effect of these and um, in fact, what, um, how this has an impact on um, real life issues is important. Um, power calculations, I'm gonna end with, uh, with ICCs. Um, the ICC drive, um, so, so basically with cluster randomized trials, the number of clusters and the level of the ICC drive, the needed sample size to obtain reasonable statistical power. Um, so in the figure below, each trial has the same total number of people, um, 11,700, but different numbers of clusters and therefore different numbers of participants in each cluster. Um, so the ICC is the x-axis and the power is the y-axis. Um, so looking at the um, ICC um, versus, versus the power. So um, the higher the ICC, in some cases, higher the power. But um, there's... So when you finally look at um, the power calculations and the, um, the clustering and the impact on power, um, power, simply put, is the ability to detect a difference in proportions between treatment and control arms. Here, this difference happens to be 10%. So the ability to detect a difference between the treatment and control arm of 10% was what this was measuring. 
So um, just try to repeat that uh, a couple of times because power calculations and power, that is the definition of power. And that is something that you need to know. Um, so for a comparison of 15% uh, versus 25% under different assumptions. So what is modifying um, the power distribution, the power percentage is really the number of clusters. So the more number of clusters um, that you act, or, or the, should I say, the more clusters you have, um, the greater the power. The less clusters you have, the less the power. Um, and so it's divided equally um, into 20 clusters, uh, 585. Um, and so, um, yeah, so, 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 so cluster modifies this um, relationship with um, uh, in, intra-class um, correlation coefficient. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's that's the consideration of power. So we've we've gone over um, by by trying to understand um, intra yeah, intra class coefficient in this cheat sheet. We've actually gone over multiple um, not only the definition but examples, um, and also ended with some um, good concepts and tie-ins. Um, to the idea of power. Um, so I, I hope this um, lecture had made sense. Thank you for listening.